everyone. This is Van Vance here with head coach Denny Crum and a busy show today. Coach, you've won the Metro Conference Tournament title already in NCAA action, so we're going to be showing a lot of Cardinal basketball. Yeah, we've had uh, a fun week. Uh, we beat Notre Dame last week, and then we came into the Metro uh, knowing we're going to play Memphis State, who's been a big rival of ours for years, and it dates clear back into the Missouri Valley Conference, and, and we knew it would be a tough game. Uh, we played each other uh, very competitively throughout the course of this season. Um, we knew that we'd have to be playing a much better than we played during the month of February if we were going to have a chance to win. And I think we've been rejuvenated physically and mentally, and we did play a lot better. And for that, uh, I'm very grateful. And the Cardinals also had a win over Florida State. We'll be recapping all that action in the NCAA. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The Denny Crum Show is sponsored by McDonald's of Kentuckiana, where it's always a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. By First National Bank, coming through for you. By the Cardinal Car Dealers, Cross Motors, and Bob Smith Chevrolet. By Kroger, see the difference, go Krogering. And by Pepsi Cola Louisville Bottlers, makers of Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, Caffeine Free Pepsi, Mountain Dew, and Slice Products. And Roman Haas. 63% free throw shooter for the year. One for four today. Up there with the game tied and two seconds left. Louisville down nine late in the second half, and the Cardinals have rallied to lead now with two seconds left to play. It's the right color. It's the world's greatest basketball machine, the Cardinal Wagon. And you can win it free from Golden Flake Snack Foods, 84 WHAS Radio, Cook and Reeves Superior Van Conversions. Go buy any place Golden Flake Snacks are sold or Superior Vans and pick up your entry. Listen to 84 WHAS. Then one of you will win this fully customized van. And you know what I always say? One day that you're stuck on Golden Flake. Sure, I'll be in the meeting at 10. Oh, tell her I'll get back in a minute. Where's that report? I filed that yesterday. Uh, go to lunch without me. Okay, I'll work late. Gotta reschedule my meeting at the bank. You do what it takes to get the job done. So should your banker. First National offers appointment banking at times outside regular business hours. See you at the branch at 7. First National Bank. Great. Coming through for you. You know, I've been telling you about Gross Diamond Centers now for a long time. Because for me, it's the only place for jewelry. But now, here's a guy who's been a Gross Diamond Center shopper for even longer than me. Yeah, I really have. The reason's simple. I get quality jewelry, and I know I'm saving money here. And that always makes me a winner. So take it from both of us for fine quality. And always lower prices. You know it's Gross Diamond Centers. Coach, we've just gone through round one of where the Metro Conference Tournament is going to move around to different locations all around the league. And Columbia, South Carolina was the first stop. The folks did a good job down there uh, as far as hosting it. I'm sure they uh, would like to sell a lot more tickets, but there was a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of great basketball. Yeah, you know, we had, uh, other than South Carolina, the host school, we had more fans there than anyone else, which didn't surprise me. Uh, we've got great support, uh, and they travel with us no matter where we go. Coming into the Memphis game, uh, one of the things that always scares you about a team like Memphis is their great quickness. They probably are as quick as any team we've played all year. Uh, they've got great balance on their team. Uh, they all are capable of scoring. They put a lot of pressure on you defensively uh, with their man-to-man. -man. They're also capable of playing zone defense. Uh, but I think their real strength is in their... Uh, transition game, they're up-tempo, uh, running on offense, and they, they draw a lot of fouls, and, and uh, they shoot free throws well themselves. Uh, when they get their outside game going with Cheyenne Gibson and, and Elliot Perry, and they're able to hit the perimeter shots, uh, they're very, very tough inside. And I, I think coming into that game, uh, I was more concerned about that particular game than anyone else that we might have to play because they are one of the few teams in our league that is quicker than we are and quickness uh, you cannot teach you cannot coach and it does create a lot of problems for you trying to stop the transition game with Elliot Perry handling the ball is always a chore 
So uh, we knew that we'd have uh, a tough time. We shot the ball well, I think about 50% for the game. But again, uh, we only hit 50% from the free throw line. I think we hit 12 out of 24 or something like that from the free throw line. And anytime uh, you go through the course of a game and miss 12 free throws, and then some of those are front ends of the one and one, you're missing a lot of points opportunities. So as I predicted, that game came right down to the wire. Everybody said, well, uh, what do you think? Will it be like the game you played in Memphis where we got ahead uh, 16, 18 points in the first half? Or was it like the, will it be like the game in Louisville where Memphis got 24 to nothing ahead of us where we missed our first 14 opportunities with turnovers and, and missed shots? And I said, no, it won't be like either one of those games. It'll be a game that'll come right down to the wire. And, and it certainly did. Uh, uh, our freshman, Everick Sullivan, hit a key free throw uh, with just two seconds left on the clock. Uh, which enabled us to have a one-point victory. So in reality, it did come right down to the wire, just like we predicted. The only thing that scared me coming at the end was the fact that, that uh, I've seen teams beat teams with 40, 50-foot shots. In fact, we've been on the losing end of a few of those. And so when I, that's what I saw in my mind when that two seconds uh, was left on the clock. But uh, uh, fortunately, uh, it, it didn't happen. And when Sullivan was asked about how to hit the rim and roll a free throw in, he says it's all in proper rotation on the shot. We'll be back to look at the Florida State game in just a moment. the Louisville Cardinals won their first NCAA title. 1986, their second. What will 1989 bring? <laughs> WHAS-TV is proud to be a part of the Louisville Cardinals and their winning tradition. Good luck, Cards. Louisville, the heavyweight champion center of the world, announces the heavyweight boxing event, March 24th in Freedom Hall. Five incredible fights will follow an awards banquet honoring Louisville's four heavyweight champions, including Muhammad Ali. The boxing event features Carl The Truth Williams and Louisville's own Greg Page. For ringside seat information, call 778-3731. For fight tickets only, call Ticketron or the Freedom Hall box office. Don't miss Louisville's heavyweight boxing event. Hey, Tone Cars hadn't exactly made me Mr. Popularity. The next time you see me, remember, the National Kidney Foundation wants, hey, they need that old car you got laying around. It'll help to drive against kidney disease, and you get a deduction for the market value. Look, hauling off your old dud won't make you like me any better, but it'll make you feel real good about yourself. Call the National Kidney Foundation and turn your dud into a deduction. The regular season champ in the Metro, the Florida State Seminoles, met the Louisville Cardinals in the finals at Frank McGuire Arena in Columbia. Coach, this is a good team. Pat Kennedy's done a great job, but Florida State began to proclaim, even when you went down there and beat them, that uh, they were as good or better than Louisville anymore. They've been bragging a little bit. Well, this particular year, they were a senior-dominated team and a uh, very talented, very physical team. Uh, uh, great quickness uh, at the guards and at, uh, in particular, one forward spot. Uh, great outside shooting from guys like McLeod. Uh, they have great bounce, great rebounding team. In fact, the first two times that we played them, they dominated us on the boards, and that was one of our areas of concern coming into this particular championship game. Uh, I felt better because we were playing well. Uh, I didn't feel good about our free throw shooting, which was very poor against Memphis in the first round, of the, or the second round, actually. Uh, but I did feel good about our chances because I knew we were playing as hard as we could play, and I know as, as long as we're doing that and mentally right, I think we've got a chance. But, but I, I kept thinking about our 50% shooting from the free throw line, and as it turned out, in this particular game, we shot free throws, I think we hit 20 out of 24. Um, had we shot 12 out of 24, 
uh, we'd have been eight points shy of where we were. We end up winning by seven, and that game would have come right down to the wire, too. So uh, I think the big difference is in, in our play on uh, uh, against Memphis State and against uh, uh, Florida State was our ability to hit the free throws. And ironically, Florida State's free throw shooting throughout the course of the season, they shot 76% from the free throw line, which is really outstanding. Uh, if I had a team that shot free throws that well, I'd be tickled to death, uh, and I know Coach Kennedy was, but it, yeah, under the pressure of this tournament, they didn't shoot their free throws very well, even though they uh, had 27 attempts. Uh, they didn't shoot near the percentage that we did, and I think that's a very unusual for their team. Consequently, I, I think that was the big difference in the game, but, but it was an up-tempo game. We got off to a good start. Uh, we hit our first three or four shots, and, and we got the ball down the floor before they could get back. And we wanted to, to play up-tempo with them and play as fast as we could play. And, and for the first time, and the two times we played them this year, we dominated the boards. We had 45 rebounds to their 30. Uh, and they had dominated us. Uh, in fact, Thomas himself had 17 rebounds against us in, in uh, Freedom Hall. And, and I think the big difference in, the, in these two games was strictly the fact that, that we hit our free throws. We shot 60% from the floor. But, but primarily because we dominated the boards and didn't give them any second, third efforts. A great win and a great uh, tournament title. But Bradford Smith making the all-tournament team and Purvis Ellison was the MVP. He took the big trophy. We'll be back in just a moment. Despite being wonderful companions, my subject group scored low in all coordination skills showed poor organization and no decision-making abilities. Unless I can bridge the gap between us, this project will be canceled. Thank you. You're welcome. Bob Smith knows that if you're looking for a new truck, it has to be the right one. And Bob Smith's the one with a huge inventory of new 89 Chevy trucks. These are the hardest working trucks in Chevy history, like the new redesigned full-size half-ton pickups, passenger Astrovans, S10 pickups and blazers, available at Bob Smith's everyday low prices. See the 89s now at Bob Smith's Chevrolet, Westport Road at the Gene Snyder Freeway. For great deals on Chevy trucks, Bob Smith's the one. Dad! Quitting time, Joan. Heard from the bank yet, Joan? They might get back to her next week. I wouldn't bet on it. First National takes your requests very seriously. When you ask something of us, we'll get back to you the very same day. How many banks can make that kind of promise? Joan Bud, your bank's on line one. Don't wait for me. What bank was that? First National Bank. Coming through for you. You know, I've been telling you about Gross Diamond Fitters now for a long time. Because for me, it's the only place for jewelry. But now, here's a guy who's been a Gross Diamond Fitter shopper for even longer than me. Yeah, I really have. The reason's simple. I get quality jewelry, and I know I'm saving money here. And that always makes me a winner. So take it from both of us for fine quality. And always lower prices. You know it's Gross Diamond Fitters. Well, it's NCAA tournament time, and that's the most exciting time of the year for everybody. Players, fans, coaches, media. This is it. This is the big show. Coach Crum, uh, a couple of years ago, you and the NCAA had a little heart-to-heart -heart talk, especially in the summertime. How do you feel of a committee? Do you think they have improved their selection process? Are you more satisfied? Yeah, I really do. Uh, I'm very complimentary of the committee van right now for a number of reasons. Uh, the, I think the biggest and the best step that they've taken is that they don't allow anyone to play at home anymore. I think, you know, there's so much involved with NCAA tournament play, not just in terms of prestige and, and you know, recognition, which everyone strives for, uh, but the money itself, is, is uh, the dollars are so big right now that, that uh, it's really not fair to give someone a home court advantage at that time of the year. Uh, the fact is now they're moving teams out of their home regions, uh, which pleases me uh, very much. I, I, I think that that's the way it should be. No one should have the luxury of a home court advantage 
uh, especially uh, at tournament time. So that, I think that's the big thing. The other thing is I think they have a better understanding today uh, of what the computer ratings are. In other words, they have so many factors that they can put into the computer rankings, and I think they're doing a lot better job analyzing those things. And, and the, the one thing I would like to see the Tournament Selection Committee do that they haven't done, and, and that's have the games on Sunday. If they're going to make the announcements at 6 o'clock, they, they should say, uh, okay, uh, everybody has to be pl done playing by 3.30 or or four o'clock or so on on that Sunday, so that everyone, so that their committee has an opportunity to then reevaluate the outcome of all those games, uh, and, and say, okay, this is the way it's going to be, and based on uh, you know this this particular uh, these particular games that were played today, because every game can change somewhat uh, uh, someone their perspective of how you and the opponents do. So I think uh, that's the one area that I'd like to see them address. But I think they're doing a great job. They, they understand, obviously, no matter who is in the tournament and who isn't in the tournament, uh, someone's going to be disappointed and somebody's going to be elated. And I think that's just the way it has to be. There's no way to get around that. Okay, we're out of uh, time to talk much about your bracket, but it's a tough one. Your region, Illinois, number one. Yeah, there aren't any easy ones. You get what you take, and that's, I mean, we take what we get, and that's what we've got, and we're, we're just happy to be playing. Well, when I talk about people being excited, because everybody would like to go right to the top, uh, let's put it this way, in our feature here on Basketball, A Chance for Heaven, and singing is Christopher Cross. I've always been a strong believer in momentum. If you can play well in your tournament, uh, and, and get on a high and, and you get the, the feeling of uh, self-confidence that goes with winning. It gives you a good feeling going into the NCAA tournament. on this ball club because we were down, like you said, with about three minutes to go and we came back. I would have been proud of my team today even if they had lost because they played hard as they could play. And I think uh, momentum is important. We're playing with a lot more confidence right now than we were playing earlier. And, uh, you know, we beat a good team today and, and whoever we play tomorrow, if we're going to win, we're going to have to play well.
I've got a big problem. Yeah? It's really embarrassing. What is it, Jesse? Well, I just can't wear those goofy pajamas with the door in the back anymore. I know. Mom's getting you some new grown-up ones. Good. Jesse? Mm-hmm? Ever had a Big Mac before? Not yet. Think you're ready? Sure am. It's a good time. Let's go get one. Pontiac Jeep Eagle is price free. Headquarters. Now, just $79.95 buys your choice. 89 Le Mans with air, stereo, and more. Or 89 Eagle Summit, your choice, $79.95. 89 Eagle Premier LX with air and more, just $13,370. 89 Grand Am with air, only $99.95. Cross Pontiac Jeep Eagle is price free. Headquarters. Two locations, Waterson Expressway at Newburgh and Dixie Highway at Lower Hunters. The WHAS Crusade serves Kentuckiana's special needs children all year long. Since 1977, the Crusade has contributed $244,000 to the Home of the Innocents. This year's contribution is helping construct a new pediatric center opening December 4th, providing care and support for hundreds of children throughout Kentucky. 35 years of caring has meant continuing assistance for Kentuckiana's special needs children through the WHAS Crusade. Well, it's the Hoosier Dome in a place uh, you rarely ever get to see, I would say, inside the University of Louisville locker room. And it is a happy locker room, even though the players have just departed. Coach Crum, a good win today. You look pretty rested and relaxed. I know it wasn't that easy during the game. Well, it wasn't an easy game. Uh, they had good athletes, uh, very quick. Uh, they do a lot of things real well. I, I thought coming into the game that we'd have to play a pretty decent basketball game to beat them. We knew they'd be loose and relaxed. and and not supposed to win, so there's no pressure on them. I thought our guys played a little bit tight. They weren't as loose as we have been, and, but we shot the ball better than they did from the free throw line. We shot the ball better than they did from the floor. Uh, we had more assists than they did. We had more rebounds than they did. We had more block shots than they did. The only thing uh, I think that they beat us on uh, was they had one more steal or sort of retired with steals or something like that. But statistically, we beat them in every way except three-point shooting. They hit uh, a little Carl Brown uh, point guard for theirs, hit six out of 13 attempts out there, and, and uh, we only made one out of three. And I think that was the reason the game was closer. Uh, we didn't shoot free throws well, but we shot 65% of their 50-some. and. But I knew coming into this game that uh, they would give us some fits in different places because they have uh, a team very similar to Memphis's. They're very quick, uh, good athletes. They jump real well. Uh, and the big difference in the game, as I saw it, was our defense in the second half. The first half, they shot 52% against us. The second half, they shot uh, 34, 35, or something like that. They didn't shoot the ball uh, near as well. We got after them a little bit better on defense and didn't give them uh, the same shots. The thing that made them so tough was that they had, they have about five guys that shoot the ball well from the perimeter, and uh, they also are quick enough that they penetrate. And when you uh, get out on them, they just were so quick they'd get by you, and it made it really tough defensively. But uh, for the most part, uh, you know, I was pleased with the game. We didn't play a great game, but uh, played well enough to win. Well, you spoke about Brown. He had 26 points. Your two forwards played well in the game. And, of course, that's Kenny Payne and Tony Kimbrough. You got a lot of scoring and rebounding out of them. Yeah, we did. And uh, we had good balance. Purvis didn't have one of those great games, but uh, I'm hopeful he'll play better against Arkansas. And speaking of Arkansas, they beat Loyola Marymount. And, and uh, they had as many points at halftime, I think 68, as we had in about the whole game. Uh, they really up-tempo. They run. Of course, when you play Marymount, that's what you have to do is you have to get up and down the floor. Uh, my guess is they, since they played zone in that game, that they'll probably play us man-to-man. -man. I'm not uh, sure. They're, they might play both, in, but I think they press a lot more than they pressed in that game against Marymount. Uh, I, I look at their team. They're young, but they have excellent athletes. I think they're a better team than Arkansas Little Rock. 
they're capable of filling the basket up. They got great quickness. They get they throw the long pass a lot. They get the ball out and run. And my guess is, based on the way we handle the ball, that they'll press us a lot. Uh, so we're going to have to be on top of our game. We're going to have to handle that ball and take care of it. Uh, we're going to have to get it inside. If we have an advantage, I think we're a little stronger inside than they are. Uh, they're two guys, 6'9", are tough, but I think if we can get the ball into Purvis and Felton and, and Tony and stuff on the inside of our game, that'll help open up our outside. So we've got uh, a job to do there, but uh, I think we're up to it if we play like we've been playing and play a little better than we played against Little Rock. All right, the Cardinals going into action. Of course, that's going to be quite a game. They've won one. They're trying to win another one and go on to another dome. They're calling Cardinals Dome Gnomes if they can get to Minneapolis. Stay tuned. Uh, we'll be back next week, and stay tuned for the action later today. This is Van Vance with Coach Crum. So long, everybody. The Denny Crum Show has been sponsored by McDonald's of Kentuckiana, where it's always a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. By First National Bank coming through for you. By the Cardinal Car Dealers, Cross Motors, and Bob Smith Chevrolet. By Kroger, see the difference, go Krogering. By Pepsi-Cola Louisville Bottler.